It's Wednesday, April 18th. I'm here at the West End Gun Club. I took the day off from work. I specifically came to shoot about 15 more rounds through this gun, uh, through the 6mm Creedmoor, to finish load testing with the Alpha Brass. Uh, because last time I was out, I was loading conservatively, so I needed to load three more batches of five with 41.0, 41.2, and 41.5. So we're going to go ahead and do that today. And I'm going to head to the back range and just do some pistol work because I haven't shot pistol in a while. But I'm going to go ahead and warm up this barrel with five rounds with some of the uh, 41.2 grains of 43.50 with the Burger 105s uh, with the brand new Lapua brass. Got five rounds here, so I'm going to warm it up because the barrel is... is clean and obviously it's cold so we'll run we'll foul up the bore and then we'll do our load testing First round of the day is 3,026 feet per second, which is fairly slow. Especially with 41.2 grains of brand new Lapua, I would have expected this to push around 3080, 3085 at least, maybe even 31. So the second shot went 3109. So it's about an 80 feet per second difference from a cold clean bore to a uh, dirty bore. So we're gonna go ahead, let's cool down a little bit and we'll go begin our load testing with Alpha Brass 410, 41.2 and 41.5 of 4350, the Burger 105s. The first test group of the day with 41.0, uh, the group's not all that great. It's actually pretty bad, about a minute of angle. Average is 30, 63 feet per second. Standard deviation of 14.3 and extreme spread of 33, which is really bad. Not like what I was shooting the last time I was out with extreme spreads closer to 10 and standard deviations under 10. The next shot group of 41.2 is a lot better than the first. Average of 30.73. Standard deviation of 9.1, extreme spread of 21. Still not as good as the last time I was out, but better in terms of uh, group size. So the last group with 41.5 for today's test group is pretty good as far as groups as from what I can see back here. But the average is 30.97. Standard deviation of 8.6. Spread of 17. It looks like right now, uh, sort of an initial assessment before I write my article that the Alpha Brass either has more ca case capacity or, or it's thinner than Peterson and Lapua, so it needs more powder in order to achieve the uh, comparative velocities to the other two brass. But I'm gonna put that in the article, but just to let you guys know that in order to hit 3,100 feet per second, I need about three tenths of a grain more than Peterson and Lapua. 
brass for six minutes. You can more on the 105 burgers. Here's my targets for today. This uh, left one here is the warm up group that I shot the first five rounds of the day. That's 41.2 H4350 Burger 105s. Brand new Lapua brass that's necked down to six Creedmoor. I think this is the first shot, then the next three, then the. No, sorry, this is the first shot, next three, then the fifth shot. First shot, you can understand cold, clean bore, and then everything else tended to go up, and I phew, don't know what I did here. Then the next three uh, groups here, going from top to bottom, are the Alpha Brass, brand new, uh, 41 grains, 41.2, 41.5. So 41 grains, that was the first shot, and these are the next four. I'm going to chalk this up to be sort of the, uh, the tendency of the group right here, and this is probably the anomaly. But again, I'm more concerned about velocity data right now, so for my report. But this is questionable. Then you can see with 41.2 and then 41.5, I was able to shrink the groups down. Uh, this is the tendency here. That was the fifth shot. This was the tendency here, and I believe this was the fifth shot was around here in the center. So this is a good group. This was just right under 3,100 feet per second. This was like 3080, I think, roughly. I have to look at my numbers again. And this is around 3060. So I'm looking at possibly this as the point here. Uh, 41.2. It seems like 41.2 is the good spot, the sweet spot for um, this brass, for alpha brass. But then again, I need to look at my numbers and uh, after the fact. And when I write my report, I'll make my assessment. But anyway, I fired 20 rounds of the 6 millimeter crew more today, or this morning, and I'm going to go ahead and shoot some pistol out here in the back ranges. So the hilarious thing is that I was spending some time this morning trying to locate my holster and my mag holder, my magazine holster. And I was trying to dig for it around in the garage before I was packing up the Jeep. And I forgot to put the pistol in the car. So I never have my pistol, but I do have my shotgun and I also have some shotgun shells because I also wanted to shoot some shotgun. So apparently no pistol practice today, but I will be running some drills with the shotgun because I haven't shot my 870 in a few years so i figure i'll run some shells through that so i already had all my magazines loaded last night so i had about 10 mags loaded already too in that pistol case but i forgot to throw it in the jeep so uh <laughs> gotta make sure you have your checklist of crap when you uh when you load up your uh load up your vehicle when you head to the range so there's nothing in particularly special about my my shotgun this is just a remington 870 uh, home defense model. I believe they called it the home defense tactical. I bought this like back in 2001, 2002. Added a surefire light. This was an incand incandescent light for a while. And I just replaced it with an LED conversion that they, they sold. I call it a conversion, but basically it's just an, a new LED uh, housing and bulb or a uh, head. So it still has the old surefire forehand on it. Uh, I put this side saddle on here. I replaced the, the uh, plastic trigger guard group with a, a police model steel one. I think I have a scattered guns technology follower. Uh, added this G, 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 and G sling loop. And I added that Magpul sling, quick, quick detach sling adapter for the front end. But I don't have a sling for it yet because I never bothered to put, build one or put one together with a quick release and then one that fits around the loop. Nothing special about this, it just works. Um, it's a good good gun for home defense. And it's got a lot of dust on it because it just sits behind a door ready to go uh, whenever I need to, whenever I have to pull it out to use. But I've dug up some old shotgun shells that I had. Uh, some of these personal fence, these are really old. I think these are probably as old as the shotgun, if not older. And some target loads. And I think I found some old rifled slugs. But I'm just going to run these through. I just, I'm not shooting for any kind of accuracy or anything. I just want to run drills, loading drills and whatnot. Uh, be able to load from an empty, uh, from an empty mag or an empty tube. So that's what I'll be doing this morning. I wanted to show a close-up of this target. This is basically an NRA target on top of the IPSEC target because the IPSEC is, is shot up. But I put two rounds 
of a, uh, sorry, a single round of this number eight Winchester target load. It's low recoil, low noise at eight yards. And if you can see here, this is quite a bit of impact at eight yards. I mean, it's a lot of spread, so it's obviously um, not a tight, tight, uh, tight group as far as the shot pattern. But for a target load that you just use for clays and whatnot, this would actually be quite effective for home defense. The this black is about uh, 13 inches, I think. Should be a 13 inch black. Should be six and a half, uh, six and a half minute black at 200 yards. But anyway, uh, that's about 13 inches. And you got most of the number eight shot pattern or the shot in the black. So at eight yards, which is, I would assume would be about the length of most people's uh, hallways in the common home in the United States, if you're gonna use a shotgun for home defense, uh, a target load is actually gonna work pretty well as far as you're gonna be able to hit your target, transfer quite a bit of energy, injure and or incapacitate the the uh, assailant in your home and you're not going to have over penetration of say a, a slug or even buckshot going through your drywall if it were if you accidentally missed and you might strike someone on the other side of that wall so this is actually a very effective load if for all those people considering you know trying to ponder buckshot versus slugs versus something else for your home defense shotgun That was an unexpectedly short range session uh, due to the fact that I forgot my pistol. Obviously at the rifle range, I only needed to shoot uh, 15 or so, 20 or so rounds just to test three more loads with the new Alpha Brass so I can have that data for my article, which I should have written and published before the end of April. Um, but yeah, I forgot my Glock. So all those mags that I loaded last night are uh, just sitting at home along with the gun. So I forgot to throw it in the, in the deep when I when I packed up a lot of gear. But anyway, I, I did bring my shotgun, which I also wanted to do some drills with. Basically, I was just doing some loading drills from a dry tube. And I'm just trying to practice the uh, off the side saddle, over the top, racking the slide, that sort of deal, just to a, an emergency reload type deal. Uh, you need to do that because obviously loading a, a shotgun is a lot slower than anything else as far as a tube, a tube magazine. Um, Granted, I posted or wrote about the, the recently released Remington 870 with the magazine, really, uh, the magazine, a box mag, but I don't think I'd ever buy one of those. As cool as they look, shotguns are a very specific platform that you use for defense. So I'll probably, I mean, just got to learn how to use a two magazine and load from, load a two magazines uh, in an expedited manner, emergency reloads and whatnot. So. Wanted to bring that out to the range just to practice. That's pretty much it for this range session. Uh, sorry, it's kind of short. Just uh, a little bit of rifle work, some shotgun work, and unfortunately no pistol work today. Not sure when I'm going to shoot again. I, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but Camp Pendleton did finally get their lease renewed for uh, to use the ranges again. Our Santa Margarita Gun Club got their lease renewed with Camp Pendleton so they can shoot their matches again. So hopefully we'll have matches coming up shortly. Hopefully I'll head out there to shoot some F-Class. But from what I saw, I don't think they have the waivers to shoot anything but 5.56 five, or 7.62. So that means I can't shoot my 6 mil or 6.5 at Camp Pendleton during the F-Class matches. Hopefully they're working on that, but I'd like to go shoot my 6 millimeter crew more at 1,000. I would love to get some, uh, some dope for that at 1,000 yards. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Today is Wednesday, April 18th at the West End Gun Club. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next vlog.